Andrews, and it's Rivara, and I'm the president of the Naples Cat Alliance, formerly known as the Collier Community Cat Coalition. Um, we just recently changed our name. Um, so we're going to start talking about what is TNR. TNR stands for Trap, Neuter, Return, as you are familiar with. Uh, where you're basically going out, trapping the cats, getting them spayed or neutered, rabies vaccinated, and microchipped, and then return to where you caught them. That is the perfect situation, if you can return them to where you caught them. <laughs> um, we do take out the kittens and the friendly cats and try and get them adopted. We try not to put them back into the colonies. But TNR is the most humane way, and now, Gwen, you said it's pretty standard, the most acceptable oh, way. Yes in the U.S. of um, trying to stop the overpopulation of cats, because we all know they reproduce at an alarming rate. Um, we've been pretty successful. As far as today, we've trapped a little over 3,000 cats in a two and a half year period. Um, the the estimate that Amanda Townsend gave me is that there's 57,000 free roaming cats in Naples. So we have a lot of work to do still, unfortunately, but we're making a big dent because in the past two years, there's been a 21% decrease in feral cat intake in domestic animal services. So at least we're seeing some results. Um, I have a little handout here about the ABCs of TNR and it just basically tells how it developed coming from Europe, United Kingdom, and Africa. Um, and just basically a little outline is what it, what it is, which we all kind of know, so we will move forward with that. Um, we get a lot of calls from people, the general public, saying there's a stray cat that showed up at my front door in my backyard, what do I do with it? We suggest if it's friendly and they can handle it that you take it to a vet and get it scanned for a microchip to see if it belongs to someone. If that isn't a possibility, then we suggest trapping. So Gwen and I are going to show different types of traps and how to go about setting them and how to handle the traps safely so you do not get hurt in the process. This is a hat of our trap. This is my favorite kind of trap. It kind of works on a little balancing act here. There's two O-rings that you pull up, and then there's a little lever here that you just pull out, and you literally balance it like that. We use newspaper to put into the bottom of the trap because the cats generally don't like the wire. I don't use a lot because it can prohibit the plate from coming down. If it's very windy, we use rocks to weight it down because so many times I set out traps and the wind starts blowing, the newspaper's going everywhere, and then the cat won't go near the trap. So that end gets set up. Your back end over here comes up, and then you put your food in it. Some people use little dishes. Never use the can because the rim of the can can cut the cat on its mouth. I prefer to use it to use the newspaper, to just put it directly on the newspaper. That way, if the cat gets in and starts thrashing and then rolling around, it doesn't get hurt by any of the bowls or anything that are inside the trap. Then what happens is we use mackerel, tuna fish, sardines, anything stinky and that's, that's gonna make them just go crazy. Just put a little bit in the back. The other trick we use a lot is catnip. We put it all around the front, inside. Don't put too much out front because I've had cats that get so <laughs> high <laughs> of the catnip that they forget about the food in the trap and they just roll around like lunatics in front of it the entire time and then walk away. <laughs> so they don't get the munchies. <laughs> yeah. No, you would think they would get the munchies and go in the trap. But so I just put a little bit out here and then I kind of sprinkle it all the way to the back. And then they walk in, and when their little paws hit this, this little lever right here, the trap shuts. The way to transfer them out of the trap is with this nifty little thing. And you basically walk them down. You can go in this way, side way, or this way. And you walk them down. You keep pushing them back. 
pushing them back until they have nowhere to go and they have to go into the carrier or if you're putting them into something else. But this is a great handy little device. Once the cat is in the trap, you've set the trap, it's ready to go, you're off in the corner waiting. When, as soon as the cat gets in, I run over with the blanket, towel, whatever you have to throw over. It immediately calms them down. When you pick up the trap, make sure you are holding it out because they can stick their little paws out and whack you. So you want to make sure that it's a good safe distance away from you. Before you put it in your car, I would greatly suggest you get a thick blanket, uh, garbage bags, newspaper, whatever you have because either the mackerel is going to fall out or they could spray, they could defecate, you know, I mean, I have a new car and it's trashed already. <laughs> If you catch something other than a cat, primarily raccoons, possums, those kind of things end up in the trap, the way to release them is to put the opening in front of you, which actually for this trap it would be what we consider the back end. You want to stand over the trap, leg on each side, reach around like this, and pull up and whatever it is, it's gonna shoot out in that direction. You don't wanna be standing next to it, you don't wanna be <laughs> like this, you know. You wanna you want make it so that you're kind of back in this area, straddling the trap. When you are TNR, you leave the cat in the trap the night before. We usually trap the night before because cats are more active at dusk and at nighttime. And then we put them in a garage, a lanai, something like that. Never leave it outside because other animals can come along and poke and prod and get in fights uh, through the trap. In the morning, they go to the clinic. They spend the night at the clinic, and the next day we pick them up. If it's a male, we release them right away. The releasing is the same way as if you were releasing a possum, a raccoon, whatever. You want to stand over it, release. Make sure the end, the end that he comes out of where you're releasing is pointing away from the street because they sometimes push like a bat out of hell out of there. So you want to make sure they're not going to run into traffic or into a parking lot or any place that they're going to get hurt. The other thing you want to do is when you set up your trap, make sure that it's in a spot where there's like an overhang or a tree. So if you're leaving your trap for any length of time and it starts to rain, that there's some protection. I prefer not to leave the trap because I get nervous that A, someone's going to take it and it's like $100, B, an animal's going to come along and mess with the cat in the trap, or C, the worst case scenario, a um, human is going to come along and do something terrible to the cat, or release it. We've had that happen before. This is called a J-hook trap, and these are great also, but they tend to slam shut with a little more force than the brown traps. These come up like this, and there's a little hook right here, and that's what triggers the plate in here. Same exact setup, except with these, you have to kind of reach in, put your food, or does this one open? Oh, it does, okay. Normally they don't. So with that, I get the newspaper set up before with the food on it and, you know, slide it down. So then the cat comes along, same thing, it hits the plate and boom, it shuts. You want to make sure that your food is really in the back of the trap. I've had only like once or twice tails get caught in this, but it does happen. And that's why I like the other trap because it's not as brutal. What do you do then? The cat is trapped in there. It's tail. Just, you, there's a little bit of wiggle room. Okay. So usually if you just give it a little pull up like that, they'll, they'll bring it in. Okay. What? It says it tail's still attached. <laughs> I guess, hopefully it is. <laughs> <laughs> and the same scenario, towel, blanket, you know, something over top to kind of chill them out. The drop trap is this 
it's like the old timey, you know, Bugs Bunny Roadrunner <laughs> setup. And this is great for litters, for large, like also for like the last cat in the colony. You've trapped everybody else, and this guy has seen everyone else go into the traps, and they're not going in. They're like, no way, I'm not going in that thing. So we use this. Normally, this would be like a pole, a PVC pipe with um, a large amount of string wrapped around it. So you put it up like this, you put your plate of food way in the back, in the middle, and then you let out the cord and hide, <laughs> and you wait for them to go under. And then as soon as the cats that you want are under there, you yank it. And the trap comes down. They all freak out. If you get a big tomcat in here, so I've seen them literally lift this up by jumping. So it can be a little scary sometimes using this. And it's best if you have a partner with you. And cover it very quickly. Cover it very quickly. <laughs> with this one is also scary because it's all netting and they can easily stick their little paws out to get you. Then what happens once you have kind of that trap? Once you have everybody in there, you take a transfer cage or a ground trap. These things work great because they line up directly with the guillotine door. You put it up tight there, you lift up the guillotine door. Sometimes they run right in because they're so freaked out. And other times you are taking sticks or whatever you can find laying around and kind of guiding them towards the door. Or a little spray bottle of water. Mm -hmm. Another good thing is to cover this transfer cage as well because it's dark and they think it's safe in there so they'll run in and then once they're in you're good um, is that why you cover the the big trap itself to yeah. calm them down to yes calm them down. because whatever if they see any light they'll try to get out so if you have, don't have this little section covered they'll try to come out this section and then when you when you cover this also leave this end open because they'll see light and they'll head right in here because they think that's the way out. Any questions so far about anything? Would anyone like to come up and try any of the traps? We have a cat to ride a truck. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go get our Canadies. <laughs> see if you fits in there. Are we good? And they can't push that up? Well, I we, use... We have safety locks. It's, I always okay. uh, put a safety lock here and here. Okay. Because... Once um, they're in. Yeah, once they're okay. in. It's a good idea to put a strap here just for some sake. Because you're transporting, say, in the car. This happened to me once. Turned over. And these rings went up. Oh. <laughs> in the car. And what happened? <laughs> Got out of the trunk. I lifted the trunk up, oh. shot out. Oh, so you didn't know until you opened the trunk. Right. I didn't oh, know. I see. <laughs> it, was, it was loose. You, you learn, you know, by doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. trapping is sometimes, you know, people are scared to do it a lot of times. But once you do it once, you're hooked. <laughs> now when I set out my traps and I hear click, 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 I'm like, yes, got them, you know? <laughs> and I just think, okay, that's one less litter being born, you know? Mm -hmm. So it is kind of addicting in a way, which is probably why we're all crazy cat women at this point, but, um, but this, this is definitely my favorite. This is my, my go-to when I have problem cats. <laughs> and, and also on that, you can prop that up um, and leave it propped up for a week and just feed the cat under there for a week so that they really trust it. You know? 
Same thing with the regular traps, too. Yeah, same thing with these. We use um, you can zip ties. Bungee this up, you know, just leave the door open, put mm -hmm. the food here, work it back in so that, you know, the food, they get used to going in, you know. And just don't set it so that it shuts. Right, right. Leave it open for a week. Um, with females, we use, usually we have them a little bit longer just because their surgery is a little more invasive, and especially if they were pregnant. Um, and then if they're not totally crazed, I will transfer them into a cage and let them hang out in the cage for a night or two until, until they're feeling better. Some cats, some even males, I've held on to for a couple days just because they weren't coming out of anesthesia that great. Um, and, you know, I mean, uh, for one, one male I had, he seemed perfectly fine. He went through the neuter. He came out. He looked a little eh, and I kept him for an extra day, and I'm glad I did because it turned out he was FELUC positive and FIV positive, and um, he was crashing, like, big time. So we actually were able to save him, and he went to Bridget's Crossing. But, um, you know, you want to keep an eye on him. Keep looking at him. Make sure they're, they're okay. Once they eat and I see that they're active, then it's like, okay, go. One of the last males I trapped, I let him go, and um, he turned around and looked at me like, <laughs> what the heck was that? And I've never seen him again, and I was feeding him every day, and I'm so mad. That, but then that does happen occasionally, because we do find that a lot of the feeders of the feral colonies are scared to trap, because they don't want the cats to be mad at them or hold grudges or anything else. So we try and tell them that really doesn't happen, they forget about it, but occasionally you do get one that just won't let it go. <laughs> Which brings us to um, colony management. Um, I have a question about yeah, the, sure. the trap. Can you just buy those at like a pet store or something? You can get these online. Online, okay. That kind you can buy at a hardware store. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, I just, just got traps for $25 at Tractor Supply. Oh, okay. And I they are in the Jay that's, that's, I go there often. Cheap, yeah. yeah, it was good. They were on sale, and it actually came with like a little trap inside, which some people use for kittens. Mm -hmm. um, but occasionally they have sales, and they're even cheaper than that. So okay. that was this pet? No. No. It's the Jay. Yeah, out one end. Just past where you turn to Marco, where you go to Marco. It's on that corner. On East 41. Um, of, of Collier. US 41. Yeah. Yeah, if you cross over 951. Yeah. 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 Oh, just okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those new buildings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
But, but yeah, you have to be careful because they can get you through there. Okay. And you know, sometimes you show up and you trap and boom, it's like you throw down the traps and it's over in two seconds, you get your cat and you're on your way. Other times you go and it takes forever, but you just have to sit there patiently, quiet. Take a book. Yeah. And then they're right by the entrance and I'm like, <laughs> and, then I, and then I always think if I don't look, they're going to go in. Makes me think of fishing. Yeah, it is. It is. It's the same deal. My husband's a hunter, so he's like, oh, your trapping skills, you know, and I'm like, no, I'm saving them, you're killing them. <laughs> so um, the Collier Spay Neuter Clinic is on Immokalee Road, and they do low-cost spay and neuter. They have a feral cat package for $50. And that includes the spayer, neuter, rabies vaccination, microchip, and an ear tip. It's the left ear that's tipped. Um, some vets around here do a V-notch, but it really should be the top of the ear taken off. And that <coughs> signals to people that that cat has been vaccinated and sterilized. Like, I just caught one the other day that was ear tipped. So I let him go. Um, Sometimes I'll keep them, like if they're looking rough and old and stuff and update their rabies, but this one was young, so I figured he was with, still within his three-year rabies vaccination. But Collier Spain Neuter Clinic does a good job. Um, they have reasonable rates, and they also keep them overnight, which is key if you don't have a lanai or a garage or a place to put them in. Um, the importance of an ear tip not only signifies to other people that the cats are spayed, neutered, and vaccinated, but it also lets DAS know that. And our agreement or, um, with DAS is that if a cat is brought in with an ear tip, they put it aside for us, <laughs> and then we come and reclaim. And we try, to re or we try to put them back into their colonies if we can. Sometimes we can't because it's a nuisance complaint and the person doesn't want them on their lawn. Um, so we have to try and figure out what to do with them, which isn't that easy, because relocating feral cats is difficult. You need to contain them for, some people say 30 days, in the new area, caged, so that they imprint on that area, and then you can let them go. I myself had a cat at my house, recouping for two days. I didn't know what to do, and I just thought, okay, he can live in my backyard, and I just, said, you know, tuck and roll. You can stay or you can go, whatever you want to do, but here's a bed, here's food, and he stayed. And now he's in my house, because he was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> um, it just kind of depends on the cat, you know? I and mean, we've had some cats, we were using a farm locally where we were rehabbing some cats, and um, at the time we had a large amount of ear tips at DAS. So we brought them there to kind of figure out what to do with them. They were ones that we couldn't put back. And two of them got loose on us, but they stayed right there at the farm. They're still there. Yeah. And, uh, and that kind of debunked the 30-day you know, hold period as well. So I think it just depends on the cat. Um, but the ear tip is very, very important. Then the other thing you should do, whether it just be one cat, 10 cats, 20 cats, is to register your colony through us. And you can go on our website and download a um, registration form, which I happen to have some, but I think we're all registered. <laughs> and it just lists the cat's name, what it looks like, you know, is it neutered or spayed, when was it rabies vaccinated, and just all this pertinent information. Because if a cat gets picked up, on a street that we don't know that there's a colony there, we can go through our database and figure out what's near there, what colonies are near there. We contact the feeders and find out if they're missing a cat, um, and then you know we can bring them back to their colony. Colony management is basically making sure that all of your cats are spayed and neutered. If a new cat shows up on the scene that you're quick to trap. If you're a feeder and you don't want to trap, you get in touch with one of the trappers, Gwen, myself, um, Annika, and we will do it for you because that's the last thing we want is more kittens. Um, the other thing is you're feeding them every day, and that does get to be costly and time consuming, <laughs> as we all know, but it's part of the deal. Um, I do suggest when feeding, you get maybe like some pie dishes are good to use, or just like a large 
um, cake pan or something to put water in, and then you put the dish of food inside the water. This creates a barrier around it so the ants can't get in. You can also put Vaseline around the outside lip, which also deters ants from getting into the food. And that's basically it on colony management. You're just feeding every day and making sure everybody's neutered and spayed and making sure everybody looks good. We just brought a cat in to Dr. Cohen's um, from a colony because his leg was swollen. So you just kind of keep an eye on things. And um, luckily that cat was handleable. <laughs> because he weighed about 22 pounds. <laughs> he got attacked by, the, there was a new cat that showed up at, near the colony recently that's unneutered and attacked this cat. So, and he, so he had bites like all over him and everything. But, um, so you just kinda, you know, you manage your colony, you make sure everybody looks good. I give Capstar to mine like once a month just to knock the fleas off because I can't touch them so I can't get any topical on them but at least it kind of gives them a Fighting chance. In a um, or something? What? You put it in a meatball or something? I put it in a tree or in a pill pocket. Okay. And the same with a uh, dewormer. We will deworm our colonies on occasion too. If they're looking thin, um, we'll give them some strongid. If there's a lot of fleas, then we'll deworm them for tapeworm. And that is basically it. Any questions? No? <laughs> Thank you.